fun tonight. The book of the Revelation in chapter 21, and we're going to read the first five verses together. Please don't close your Bible on me. Um, we're going to look at several different references uh, in the Scripture and also throughout the chapter and surrounding this chapter. But th tonight we'll conclude nine not nine weeks, but nine messages because we had some weeks where either somebody else preached or we didn't have a Thursday night service here. And so, But tonight is, will be part nine of our series that we started some time ago that the Lord laid on my heart to start because so many of our people was going through so many storms. We've been dealing with storm survivors. We started way off back over there with Noah in Genesis chapter 6 and the first storm. And we walked through the Bible and looked at storm after storm after storm and how to survive them, how to, how to make it from one side of the storm to the other side of the storm and come out still with joy in your heart and a song on your lips and a shout down in your soul and still serving God and being faithful. But tonight we're going to step off of time and we're going to land in eternity. And when we step off of time and we land in eternity, there'll never be another storm. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to deal with the final survival. Uh, you going to make it tonight if you save. I mean, I hate to tell you, but if you save by the grace of God, washed in the blood, you're going to end up, the Bible says, that the Lord reserves he which is spiritual to himself and he'll come forth of them all. You coming out one of these days. One of these days we're going to get out of the final storm. And we're running to home tonight. Revelation 21 verse number 1. The apostle John said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right. For these words are true and faithful. Let's read the next verse. This is a good one. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha. That's the first letter of the Greek alphabet. I was way back out yonder where it all started at. And I'm Omega. That's the last letter of the alphabet. He said, and I'm way out there where it'll all be wrapped up at. And, I, and I've been everywhere in between too. Hallelujah. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Here in our text tonight, we find the finality of storm survivors. You say, preacher, why do you turn to this text to show us the, the, the final survival, the finality of God's people surviving storms and landing on heaven's shore? Because the Bible said in verse number one, I don't know if you caught it, but the very last clause of verse number one, the last six words of verse one said, and there was no more sea. You know what that means? That means if there ain't no sea, there ain't no storms. You're going to a land where storm clouds will never roll in. You're going to a land of the last two messages we preached on about the disciples on the sea and Jesus having to calm the stormy sea and Jesus walking on the sea and the disciples being filled up in the boat from the water of the sea and the waves of the sea. You go into a land, there ain't never going to be no more sea. Which tells me that there ain't never going to be any more storms tonight. 
And child of God, it matters not how rough your storms may be here. Mark this down, tattoo it to your heart, weld it to the inside of your soul. Mark this down, you are going to get out one day. No matter how rough the storms are here, you are going to make it. You say, how do you know that? Because that alpha, that omega, that beginning, that ending, that God promised that I would. He didn't just promise that I would. He predestinated that I would. He preordained that I would. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, when you read that word predestined or predestinated in your Bible, it is only for saved people. It ain't talking about God predestinating somebody to be saved. The word predestined in your Bible, predestination only starts after you get saved. Once you do get saved, then God has foreordained some things. Once you get saved, God says, okay, now that you're saved, I'm predestinating some things. You say, what did God predestine? According to Romans chapter 8, he's predestined us to be conformed to the image of Christ. And according to Ephesians chapter number 1 and verse number 11, the Bible said we have an inheritance that was predestined. Brother, I'm going. He's already marked it down that I'm going. I ain't hoping that I'm going to survive. I don't think I'm going to survive. I'm going to make it to right here because he said that I would tonight. The apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and shall preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 verse number 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it, will perform it, will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 for I know in whom I have believed in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 4 that we have an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved, reserved, reserved in heaven for you tonight. Jude said in Jude verse number 24 now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy tonight say what's all that mean that means we're going to make it this evening that means I just read to you not a fairy tale not a pipe dream not something that we're just thinking is going brother I just read to you what your future is if you've been saved by the grace of God, if you've trusted Jesus Christ, I'm telling you the future is a looking good. I don't got a clue what Biden's going to do. I don't got a clue what Russia's going to do. I don't have an idea what the economy's going to do. But I know what God's going to do. And I know where the final resting place is. And there may be a lot of storms from here to the bright sunny shores of heaven. But if worse comes to worse, I'm still going. I'm I'm still going to land over there and you can make it through storms here knowing there's coming a day where there'll never be another storm tonight. Lift up your head. Your redemption draweth nigh. Now is our salvation, Paul said, now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. We're talking about the final survival tonight. There are things that we're going to survive to see. Several things in the text. Can I throw them out real quick to you? Things that we're going to survive to see. Say, preacher, I'm telling you, I am going through storms in this life. I know you are. That's why I've been preaching this series. That's why I preached eight messages about how to survive these storms and keep walking with God. But tonight, we ain't talking about surviving storms no more. We're talking about the day we're going to get out of them. Never, ever, ever going to be another one. Say, what are we going to get to see when the final survival comes? Well, we'll see new things. New things. Several times in chapter 21, the Bible talks about new things that are coming. Verse number 1, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. 
In verse number 2, he said, I saw the new Jerusalem. The one that sat upon the throne in verse 5 said, Behold, I make all things new. There are several new things. You say, what's going to be new when we get out there in eternity with the Lord Jesus? Well, we see there is a new sphere. A new sphere, a new atmosphere, a new stratosphere, a new biosphere, a new hemisphere. Stick whatever you want to before a sphere. But everything you know to be normal now in this sphere, in this atmosphere, in this stratosphere, everything you know to be normal in this universe, in this solar system, on this world, it's going to be all new on that day one day. Do you realize, do you realize this, this world that we live in? And I, I, I love the beauty of this, uh, of what God's given us in creation. I love looking at sunsets and sunrises. I think out there at Colorado, Brother Dan and Miss Tanya just went out there. I think that's some of the most beautiful country in the entire world. I always used to think, Brother Zeke, I always used to think that we had mountains over here in the southeast, the Blue Ridge Mountains and all that kind of stuff. Uh, them ain't mountains, them's hills. If you think those are mountains, you ain't never seen mountains. Go to Colorado and out that way and see the Rockies. They dwarf what we got. The first time I saw them, I was amazed. It's, it's gorgeous. It will blow your mind. My wife and I just went out there two years ago on our anniversary trip. It's, it's mind-blowing. Some of y'all like the beach and be able to sit there and hear that water roll in and see just for miles and miles out there that water and that beautiful sandy beach. It's gorgeous. And, man, some people like this and that. But do you realize even at its best state, the things you enjoy about this sphere, it's cursed. At its best, what you look at and find enjoyment in the beauty of our, of our solar system, of our planet, it is cursed. It is plagued. It is diseased. You say, no, preacher, that's just mankind. No, the Bible said because of man's sin, the ground got cursed. God cursed it with thorns. God cursed it with thistles. What do you think earthquakes are? It's a curse. The Bible said in Romans chapter 8 that creation itself groaneth in pain and travaileth waiting for this day. What do you think earthquakes are when the ground quakes and breaks? It's a curse. What do you think tsunamis are that these huge waves develop out in the ocean and wipe out thousands of people and towns and populations? It's a curse. What do you think tornadoes are that wreak havoc on communities and roll through and level places and kill people? It's a curse. What do you think hurricanes are that sweep through out of the Gulf and come up out of the Atlantic and hit our, our coast? It's a curse. What do you think floods are? It's a curse tonight. What do you think extreme temperature is? Extreme heat that makes you sweat. There was no sweat in the garden when the earth was perfect. The Bible said that's part of the curse. He told Adam, in the sweat of your face you're going to work. There was no extreme temperature, no extreme cold, no extreme heat. It's all a curse. Everything we look at, everything we enjoy, it's all plagued. It's all been cursed. It's all been tainted. It's all got a dark stain from sin but I got good news there's a new one coming there's a better one coming there's one coming that won't be tainted by the dirty footprint of the sins of mankind can I show it to you hold your place in Revelation 21 go back to the left to 2 Peter in chapter number 3 Go back to your left to 2 Peter in chapter 3 and watch what your Bible said here. 2 Peter in chapter number 3. There's coming one and Peter said we should be looking for it. We should be longing for it. We should be living for it. Look what he said in 2 Peter chapter 3 and, and verse, verse number 10. 2 Peter 3, 10. 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Don't hold on to this world too tightly. It's going to burn up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Watch it, verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens be being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. I love verse 13. This is the new thing. Look at the new thing. This is what we're looking for. Nevertheless, we, you and I, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Uh, brother, that's where we're headed. We're headed to a sphere that there ain't no sin that's ever tainted it. We're headed to a sphere, brother, that ain't never had anything wrong with it. It's going to be right from the beginning and right to the end. We're going to get back everything that Adam lost. We're going to survive to see the new sphere tonight. Not only do we see there's a new sphere, there's also coming a new city. There's coming a new city along with that new sphere. This world, this sphere couldn't handle the new city. So God's got to make a new sphere to handle the new city. Because it's awesome. Look at Revelation 21. You still got it open there. Revelation 21 said this in verse 2. I, John, saw the holy city. It's called New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Do you want to know what this city looks like? Come down to verse, come down to verse number uh, 10. Watch this city. My goodness, watch this city. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Personally, I believe this is what Jesus spoke of when he said, I go to prepare a place for you. I believe it was the new Jerusalem, the holy city. It's in the third heaven right now, but one day it's coming out of the third heaven having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. He that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. Check the dimensions out on this whopper. And the city lieth four square. The length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Y'all, that's over 1,500 miles. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. It's all, y'all, that thing's over 1,500 miles that way. Over 1,500 miles that way. And over 1,500 miles that way. You say, my mind can't comprehend that. That's because you live on a cursed sphere. And all you've ever known are cursed cities. But ain't that what the cities here are trying to do? Every big city you go to, you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to go that way and that way and that way. But they ain't never going to get as big as what God's going to do. Brother, God's going to dwarf any city that man ever made. They ain't never going to get that way, that way, and that way. Big as God's city is. Keep reading. Check this city out. Check it out. I'm, I'm reading to you about something here now. I'm going to make a comment here in just a minute. Verse number 17. And he measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man. That is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper. And the city was pure gold, like unto gl clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelve an amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. Good God, my Lord, the clam must have been to make a pearl that big, praise God. 
And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. You say, preacher, what did you just get done reading to us? Preacher, what in the world did you just get done telling us about? I just read to you about home. <laughs> Y'all, that's home. I just ready if you're saved by God's grace that's where we're headed that's where my fa- that's where my family's going to live that's where my babies are going to know that's where people that's got gone before us is already at we're going to see it it's the new city it's the holy city that's home tonight my home is not 11360 old Concord Road Rockwell my home has never been 755 Ben Roma Clinton Road, Lines, Georgia. When I got born again, that's home. All I am, Brother John, is I'm a pilgrim and a stranger. I don't belong in this world no more. I don't belong in this messed up society no more. I'm an alien in this world, but that's home. I ain't reading you some pipe dream. I ain't reading you some fairy tale. You know the problem with some of God's people? It ain't real to us no more. It don't hold no love for us no more. We don't desire it no more. But that's home, child of God. The Bible said, O Abraham, the father of faith, said, He looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Brother Matthew, O Abraham's just like me. He was a country boy looking for a city. I'm a country boy. I ain't never lived in the city, but I will one day. I'm a country boy looking to move to a city. I've been to some cities. Some of y'all been worldwide cities. I've, I've been, you know, overseas and seen some cities. I've seen most of the major American cities around here. I ain't never seen one I wanted to live in. I never seen one I thought I'd like to live here. All them crime, murder, shootings and stabbings and killings and evil. But according to Peter, this one here, it's a place wherein dwelleth righteousness. You say, why is it going to be a place wherein dwelleth righteousness? Because the God of righteousness runs it. And the people of righteousness live in it. Thank God that's home this evening. (laughs) Somewhere beyond the grave... There is a land that Jesus went to prepare by his own hand. And for the saved by grace, there is a rest in place. And in a few more days, it will. Now some call it heaven I call it home Some call it dreaming Just let me dream on Some call it paradise Somewhere beyond the skies Some call it heaven I call it home. That's home, friend. You're going to survive. You're going to survive. Isn't that worth surviving for? Hey, 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 it's worth seeing, friend. I'm going to see it. Sail on. Work through the trial on. Live through the storm on. Home is waiting. Home's just on the other side. Maybe by tomorrow we might pull in the dog. Just sail on. Just go a little farther. I love what your Bible said in Acts 27 over there where Paul was in that storm. It said when he was in that big old storm, Brother Mike Udy, it said that the, they sounded. They sent out a sound through the water and they found they were drawing near to some country. 
They could tell they was getting closer and closer. Y'all, by the looks of things and sound of things that I'm seeing, we're getting real close. You say, how close are we to that? We're closer than you think we are. We're getting real close. Hallelujah. I got to hurry here. I'm, uh, uh, I, I was about to turn cartwheels in my spirit this afternoon uh, the, looking at this stuff myself. New things. We're going, it's the final survival to see new things. Can I say we're going to see something else? We're going to see no more things. You say, what do you mean see no more things? You just said we're going to see something. No, I mean there's some things that the Bible says there'll be no more of. It's a land. Where we're going, it's, it's, Brother Doug, it's a land of no mores. So what do you mean, preacher, a land of no mores? Look at verse, verse 1 said this at the end of verse 1. The very end of verse 1 said, there was no more sea. Verse number 4 said, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Chapter 22 in verse 3 said, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. We're not just going to see new things. We're going to see the no more things. What what things are we going to see? No more. There'll be no more battles. I just come in here to encourage you hard. We've been trying to survive the storm. I'm just trying to tell you we're going to a place where we're going to ultimately survive. There'll be no more battles. You say, why no more battles? Because chapter number 20 in verse 10, the chapter before this said this in verse 10 of chapter 20, the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And that sorry, good-for-nothing, low-down, rotten skunk that has fought me every step of the way shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Say, what are you excited about? There ain't going to be no more battles in this life. That, that, that thing right there, that anointed cherub that covered back, way back out y'all in eternity past, that old serpent, Leviathan, that, that angel of light, that cherub, that, that Satan, that Lucifer, that devil, that father of lies, that thief that came to steal, kill, and destroy, that accuser of the brethren, he has fought me every step of my Christian life. He was dooming and damning me to hell before I got saved. The Bible said the God of this world, that Satan, hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. You got loved ones that are lost and going to hell? There's your problem right there. Blinding the minds so they can't see the truth. Got loved ones that didn't accept Jesus Christ and neighbors and friends that didn't accept him and died without Christ and they're going to be in the lake of fire for eternity. There he is right there. Blinded them long enough to send them off into hell. I got family and friends like that. They spend eternity like that. That's real, friend. Thank God there's coming a day, Brother John. I ain't never going to have to fight him again. Since I've been saved, since I've been saved, Brother Bill, he has used my flesh against me. He uses the world against us. He throws darts at us. He tries to hinder us. But y'all mark this down. We're going to survive to a day where there will be no more battling. We're, we're coming to a day where we're going to be able to lay the sword down. No more fighting. If you've ever been through a storm, you ought to be looking forward to this day, friend. No more things. No more battles. No more broken hearts. Verse 4 said this. No, watch, watch the broken hearts be no more. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. No more broken hearts. Go into a land where hearts will never break ever again. Going to a land, said there's no more death, where Brother Joe will never say goodbye to loved ones again. I asked Brother JC, 
gearing tonight when he come into church. I asked him over in the, in the class. I said, how's your week been? And he said, oh, it's been good. And he came back up to me when we got over here to church. And he walked up to me. He said, you know, I didn't tell you all the truth. He said, it, it, I have had a good week. He said, but today, he said, I've had kind of a rough day today. He said, today, six years ago, my wife went home to be with the Lord. <laughs> J.C., they come a day with no more goodbye. I'm sick of that, that broken heart stuff myself. I've had enough of all that. If Jesus don't come, there'll be more of it. I'll have to stand over more caskets. I'll have to preach more funerals. I'll have to console more broken-hearted family members. I've had all the want of it, though. We're going to a land, we'll never say goodbye again. We'll never have to say, I'll see you later, goodbye. Ne- 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 never, never another time. Watched two ladies in our church this past week on Facebook have pictures of their fathers and talk about how much they missed their daddies. Knew both men, Miss Misty and Sister Amy, and they was commenting back and forth about how much they missed their daddies. Now it's going to be another day where we're going to have to say goodbye to them kind of folk again. We're going to a land of no mores, y'all. No more battles. No more broken hearts. No more burdens. He said in verse number four, not only shall there be no more crying, he said, but neither shall there be any more pain. The heavy burdens that are a normal part of life here, we just take them for granted. It's a normal part of life burdens are. We're going to set them down over there and never pick them up again. Can I say we're going to a land where there's no more bad behavior? Look at verse number eight. I'm telling you, look at the Bible, verse eight. No more bad behavior, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All sin and debauchery is over. Can I say I'm not just sickened at the bad behavior of others in our society and in our world? I'm looking forward to a day where I don't ever have to battle my own bad behavior anymore. I like what somebody said the other day. Somebody said, somebody said, if other people's sin bothers you worse than your own sin does, you need to hit an altar and get right with the Lord. You know whose sin should bother you more than any sins on the face of the planet? Your own sin should. That doesn't mean we don't condemn sin. That doesn't mean we don't preach against sin. We do. But brother, nobody's sin in your life should bother you any more than your own sin does. You know what I'm looking forward to? I'm looking forward to a day where I never got to battle my own bad behavior no more. I'm looking forward to a day the Bible said I'm going to have the mind of Christ. Beloved, beloved, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Never have to worry about my own bad behavior no more. Going to have a mind that'll, that'll never think a wrong thought. Going to have a mouth, I don't ever got to worry about saying the wrong thing. Going to have a heart that's perfectly in tune with the Father and my Savior and never have to worry about a prone-to-wonder heart. Glory to God. We're going to survive to see it, man. Storm survivors is the final surviving. New things, no more things. Can I say this also? The things I'm preaching about tonight, these things in chapter 21 and surrounding this, these are neglected things. So what do you mean these are neglected things? This stuff I'm preaching about tonight used to be preached on all the time. I've told you all this before, but there were two subjects that used to get preached on nearly weekly when I was a boy growing up. And in any revival you went to or any church you went to, you could hear two subjects preached on regularly. Hell and the second coming. And then you know something else you heard preached on regularly that you very rarely, very rarely hear preached on anymore except at funerals. What I'm preaching on tonight. Heaven. The new Jerusalem. Home. You know why? I I thought about that. I thought about that. You know why we don't hear this? You know why this is neglected? You know why this subject is neglected? And why even some of y'all tonight, it it just really ain't doing a whole lot for you? I'll tell you why. 
Because your life is drove down here. We are living in a church world that we have gotten satisfied here. We enjoy here. We enjoy our life. We enjoy our fun. We enjoy our hobbies. We like living here. Well, brother, if you like living here so much, you ain't going to enjoy preaching like I'm preaching tonight. I'm talking about, I believe with all my heart, God allows and lets storms come into our lives. Brother uh, Donald, God lets storms come into our life for this reason. So we get detached from the here and start longing for the there. Yeah, absolutely. Some storms ain't meant to sink you or to crush you. It's just make, made to get you to refocus. Paul said this in Colossians chapter number 3. He said, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. He said, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. We're waiting for him. Don't get adjusted to this world. The things I'm preaching about tonight are so neglected by most preachers and most bodies of Christ because people ain't looking for him to come. All of our messages and all of our preaching centers around this, how to get along in this world, how to make it in this world, how to survive in this world. I ain't staying in this world. You, you better start living your life here for what's coming. You, bet, you better start laying up for yourself treasure in heaven where neither moth and rust doth corrupt where thieves don't break through and steal. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Set your affection up there. God will take care of the rest down here. We're living in a day where preachers are trying to build kingdoms here like they're going to stay. I'm convinced some of them probably are. Trying to build museums, mausoleums, big thrones on earth. Brother, I'm, I'm trying to get as many people to go with me yonder way. Yes, everything, everything down there is going to burn up anyhow. Right. I just read to you a minute ago, 2 Peter 3, it's going to burn. It's all going up. Paul rebuked some men that tried to keep Christians neglecting what I'm preaching about tonight. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, Paul said to be wary of two men named Hymenaeus and Philetus. And he said, who concerning the resurrection, that's when we get yonder where I'm preaching about, who concerning the resurrection has said it's already passed and they overthrew the faith of some. In other words, he said these Hymenaeuses and Philetuses, they're not getting people to be looking for the Savior and longing for the Savior and living for that world. They're just trying to get them to live right now. I am not the least bit interested in living here. I'm trying to live here for what's coming out there. Amen. These are neglected things. Then lastly, let me say this, these are necessary things. These things are not only going to be new things, it's not only going to be no more things, we find they're neglected things, but they're also necessary. This is what Peter said back over, if you still got your Bible there, 2 Peter chapter 3, right after, right after Peter, or right in the middle of Peter, talking about this new heaven and new earth. He says this in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 11. He says this, Seeing then, 2 Peter 3, 11, that all these things shall be dissolved. Everything you see is going to burn up. He said, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Verse 14, verse 14, he said, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. You know why preaching on this stuff is necessary? It keeps us living right. Because if you ain't looking for nothing, and you ain't longing for nothing, and you don't think nothing's coming, well, just go do what you want to do. Act how you want to act. Live how you want to live. Do what you want to live, because you ain't going nowhere. But y'all, we are. And because we're going somewhere, Peter said, because these things are going to dissolve, we ought to be a people that's got holy lifestyles. That's what conversation means. What manner of person ought you to be in a whole conversation and godliness? You know what preaching like this does too, why it's necessary? It keeps us, the whole point of the series of sermons, 
It keeps us surviving the storms. You know what will help you survive your storm? Knowing that this ain't all there is. That he told us it would be this way. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rather rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may also rejoice with exceeding joy. Jesus said, in this world ye shall have tribulation. He told us, stop getting shocked. Stop getting rocked. Stop getting your legs knocked out from under you. He told us, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. What does preaching like tonight do? It helps us refocus and say, all right, yeah, I may be in a storm. Yeah, it may be rough. And yeah, there may be some sorrow. Yeah, it may be tough. But it's going to come to pass. And one day the sky's going to break clear and our Savior's going to step out and call us home. And we're headed to that city and to that sphere and we're getting out of here one of these days. Refocus, child of God. Get your eyes back where they should be. Grab as many people along the way as you can and say, come go with me to heaven. I'm going to walk with God and live for Jesus while I am here. But I'm not living my life like I'm staying. I'm living like I'm leaving. We used to sing this song all the time at the church I grew up in. I don't, I think, it's in our, I don't think it's in our hymn book. The last verse said this. Life's day will soon be done. All storms forever past. And we'll cross that great divide into glory safe at last. We'll share the joys of heaven. A harp, a home, a crown. This was always my favorite part of that verse. The tempter will be banished. And we'll lay our burdens down. And it will be worth it all. When we see Jesus, life's trials will seem so small. When we see Christ, one glimpse of His dear face, all sorrows will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. going to be over. It's going to be over. Just keep on surviving the storms. The final survival. Esther, help me over here. Let's all stand. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Maybe tonight you just need to refocus. Maybe tonight you're in a storm, but you need to be reminded of what's coming. Maybe you've not been living for what's coming and you've been neglecting this. Tonight this might have been necessary in your life. Maybe you'd say, Lord, help me to set my affection on those things. Father, I pray you'd bless the simple message from your word. Lord, my heart, the, the last couple, two or three days studying this thought, my heart was so overjoyed. I, I was personally blessed just once again thinking about where I'm headed. Knowing that the storms and the troubles that we go through here are simply temporary. And we're getting out. This is, Lord, help us never to let the devil lie to us to the point to where we start thinking this is just some fairy tale or it's not going to happen. Peter said, the last days there will come scoffers saying, where's the promise of his coming? Oh, Lord, you're coming. We're leaving. And we're looking for you. We're longing for you. I pray there'd be a crowd of people at Bible Missionary Baptist Church that when you come, you'd find us faithful. You'd find us about the Father's business. But you would find us absolutely longing for you to come. We pray, even so come, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray you'd encourage your people with this thought tonight. Now, in Jesus' name, amen. If you need to come, you come. Sister, sing for us.